the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from pastors here at the Rock. Before we do anything, I asked Dan if I could just come up and share some things with you. We're going to pray tonight. There's just a handful of us. And I think we need to pray for the condition of the people's hearts that are in the Inland Empire. We're here in the Inland Empire and we're not going anywhere. And um, this is where God has you to be. This is where many of you have grown up. And many of you have lived your life, established your life and families. You're not going anywhere. You're not going to change. And God's not taking you somewhere else. And I think there's a condition that we probably don't see oftentimes. Uh, I, I, I've just been troubled all afternoon. I, I, I told Deborah before I came here tonight, I said, I just don't want to say anything. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to get on a platform. I didn't dress to get on a platform. Um, in my mind, I was not going to do anything until God was really upon me. And I can't get away from what God is saying on the inside of me for us tonight to pray for for the condition of 2012. A lot of times we don't understand what really takes place spiritually. We, we don't recognize it, we don't understand it, we don't see it, we just expect it, and we just say, well, that's just the way it is. Some years back, Deborah and I were driving on Hospitality Lane when they were building a building. There was a, a big caterpillar type construction device out there pulling up the ground and the dirt and in each load of dirt as we were at the parking spot, we noticed they were pulling up some sand and lots of boulders. And as we were looking at this, we both stopped and we said to each other, this place is full of boulders. It's a riverbed is where you live your life. It's a prophetic liver, riverbed of rocks and boulders. And when we saw that, we knew immediately, I said in my spirit, and I said it out loud to her, that's the condition of the people, is it's full of some dirt and a lot of rocks. Rocks, hard rocks. The condition of the people of the Inland Empire, because most of the cities are built on bedrock, where they'll pull up the sand and dirt and lots of rocks with it. In fact, if anybody's ever tried to build a pool out there, you know what I'm talking about. It costs you extra money because they have to blow up the rocks to get through the rocks to build a pool for you. It's a very difficult place. God has really done something at the Rock Church World Outreach Center. Last year was our quiet year. I didn't even know really what it was all about until today. Can you imagine? God spoke to me well over a year ago and said, I don't want you to do anything in the year 2012. I want you to stop everything. It's hard to stop everything when everything is on the go. It's hard to stop everything when everything is going well. Nobody wants to stop when the men's ministry is pushing 2,000 men showing up at their convention. The women's ministry is packed out with over 3,000 and talking about going to maybe two women's ministries. All the children's ministries are packed and filled and things are going so well in every area of this church. And then here God speaks to me and I knew it was God. I didn't even know why it was God until this afternoon. He says, stop everything. Stop the women's ministry. Stop the men's ministry. Stop the men's breakfast, stop the outreach ministries for uh, in every area, stop having guest speakers, and we didn't have a guest speaker in for a year. Stop everything. Had John and Lisa Bevere scheduled, had to call John up and say, John, I'm sorry, they're both coming in at the same time for one of our meetings. Yeah, not coming, John. It's like bizarre, one after another. The only thing that we were allowed to do last year was to continue having church and strengthen the church itself. We didn't realize after nine, eight years in this building how 
week we had gotten with how many lights had blown out. We, because there were so many functions going on, we couldn't fix them. That there's just going from function to function and event and event and event and uh, function after event. And, and, and it was just crazy for all of us. And we loved it because people got saved, plays took place, uh, activities that were going on, things were happening, people were saved. Such an excitement place. And then God says, no, stop. It was almost as if, if I didn't know the voice of the Lord, I, my friends, I would have said, that has to be the devil. I think most people would have said that was the devil. But I know the voice of the Lord, and I knew it was God. And I never knew why for one year until tonight. I thought it was just to fix the infrastructure and get us in shape. I never knew why. God was saying something to the rock. Be quiet for one year so that you can speak louder than you ever have in the years to come. And when I heard that inside of me, God shared something with me a couple of three, four weeks ago about the rocks of the hearts of the people. I'm not talking about you because you're here tonight. The condition of the people has a lot to do with the future of an area. I was reading in Nehemiah for an example, the condition of the people had a lot to do. They were there in the community, but it wasn't until someone brought the message from God to rebuild the walls that the condition of the people now changed to get a one vision to build the wall back up. But all of the workers were there already established and they were all in the communities and they were all part of it but no one did the job of the Lord until the Lord spoke and it was just fascinating to me how we can have the condition of the people right before our eyes and not understand how important it is that we pray for that condition I never understood what it was I just saw the rocky spirit you know and hard-hearted. A couple of weeks ago, God speaks to me. Here's what he said. It was on a Wednesday night. If you've been with us on a Wednesday night lately, it's like nuts. I have never in all of my years, I've, I've been senior pastor of churches for 35 years. I have never in my life been in the presence of God like I have on some of these last few Wednesday nights. And I said to myself in speaking to God on the way home one Wednesday night, I said, God, what more could a people want? The worship was phenomenal that night, phenomenal worship. I mean, just to have that in a church service is beyond most churches. I don't care, I'm not picking on other services. Sometimes they're nice, they got the guitars, they got little songs they sing. But I mean, this place took you that those nights into a different level. And then the Spirit of God dropped and the people came down the aisles. And maybe if you were here, you remember weeping and crying and bawling. I'm talking where I look down on the steps and I, and I can still see even some of the spots of the salty tears on the wood that stained even as the light reflects off of it. Even as I stand up here now, this whole bottom steps were filled with water from the tears of the people. Then the Word of God was preached, and which is like one of the most amazing things about the Rock Church and World Outreach Center is the Word of God. It's not just rich here. It is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I go to other places all the time, and it's like, and then I come this place is phenomenal. The Word of God was so rich, so easy to understand, so easy to perceive and see, receive and have it touch and change your heart. See, having some cool sentence isn't what it's about. It's when the Word is so phenomenal that it touches the inside and changes you. 
and it took place every time. And then there was an altar call. I remember one night, an altar call and like 20 people got saved. And then there was an altar call and nobody got saved. And then there was another altar call and four more people, the same night, we had like five altar calls. Anybody remember that? It was like nuts, who has five altar calls? We've all been in churches where they take up five offerings. How many times have you ever been in a church that takes up five altar calls? It was like crazy, guys. And all within an hour and 20 minutes, we were out of here. And we had just deeply, deeply been touched by God. To the place where I'm saying as a minister for all of these years, oh my God, you just showed up. And then I sat there this morning and I saw that videotape of our silent year. That's our silent year. That's our silent year, guys. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. That's the silent year. And I say to myself, why isn't every seat filled? Why isn't there a line 30 minutes before church service wanting to come into this service where God is, obviously. You've never been in a church service where tons of people don't just get saved. That is telling you something. No one gets saved except by the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it's the Holy Spirit's in the house. I don't need somebody to shout out in tongues and interpretation over here. Show me somebody getting saved. I'll know without a doubt that's the Spirit of God, but I don't know whether that is. And it's like amazing. But the question is, why isn't the seat next to you on both sides of you filled? Why isn't there people on outside the doors for 30 minutes waiting to get in to where the presence of God is? Simple. Rocks and soil. I was watching a Jaguar commercial as I was watching a football game this afternoon. The Jaguar commercial started off with these cars chasing each other. They looked like cars to me. At the end of the commercial, I went, wow. Do you know why I went wow? Because it wasn't just cars chasing each other. It was talking about the cars chasing each other. See, the marketing industry in America understands more than the church in America. The marketing industry knows that you cannot just display the car. You got to tell the people who are full of stones and rocks and hard soil, you got to tell them what it is they're seeing or they won't see it. And at the end of the commercial, I went, wow, that is some kind of cool. Th and I, I, why? Because someone told me about that Jaguar commercial. And now I understood what this meant with the cars that look so cool going around. And if somebody doesn't speak loud about what God is doing in this place, the people won't see it. And it's called deception. Dr. Kanga has a medical clinic. He calls it the ultimate medical clinic in Highland, right? Isn't it the ultimate medical clinic? If he just put up the words medical clinic, he's saying the same thing, but it's not the ultimate medical clinic. When you go there, you expect to get something more than what somebody else is getting, because he spoke it. I had a silent year, so we can have a year to speak what God's doing in this house. We're not here to build up man, but we are here to build up God. And people don't know because of the rocks, what's God and what's Mickey Mouse. What's God 
and what isn't God. We still have churches all over America that are filled with people whose pastors have gone astray and run off with other women, who have violated children, who have stole from the offerings, who are alcoholic and drug addicts in between services, and yet the people still speak how great their church is, and their churches keep growing when they're in sin. Here's a church where none of that has ever happened, and the people are full of rocks called deception, and they don't even know when God is showing up and walk out of the place when they say, oh my God, I now understand what God is like to be in his presence. When you have been in the presence of God, nothing else takes its place. Now, let me just share something with you. I was sitting over there during worship and praise. Genesis, the third chapter popped up at me. Serpent said to Eve, to the woman, you will not surely die. Verse 5, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Stop. Her eyes were already open. They were already naming all of the animals. They were already part of the whole system. They already had control of everything. They were already like gods with no sin inside of them. He says, but God knows that in the day that you eat, your, your eyes will be open and you will be like God knowing good and evil. They already knew good and evil. They were deceived. I'm telling you that the condition of the people in the Inland Empire is innocent, fragile, pliable, playable, without a guile, but they're deceived as to what is God and what isn't God. Because there's no way anybody that has any insight in what is God and what isn't God could come into a house like this week after week after week and not sense the presence of God that changes the lives of people and it's deception. And all we want to do tonight, I want to lead you in a prayer to break the spirit of deception off the people of the Inland Empire and call them into the house of God. Now listen to me. If it's not this house, then call them into a house that's better than this house. But I know of none personally, or I'd be there and shut this place down in a minute. Because it's not a game to me, never has been a game to me. It's either going to be real or we shut it down. It's either going to be what God says it's going to be or we shut it down. And I'm telling you, this is a real place, healthy, strong, the presence of God, spiritual leadership, the presence of God and His power shows up, changes lives, changes marriages, changes children, changes existence, changes economics, changes the mental capacity of each and every one of us. God shows up here and half if not more than the people that attend this church don't even know it nor see it because they're deceived. That's why the commercial has to tell how the Jaguar car is a certain way. Our Disneyland is like this. Our, everything that you hear has something said to it and about it because the people can't think for themselves. But I'm believing that God is gonna reveal the people. And this is a year where we open our mouths and tell the story of the Rock Church and World Outreach Center to a lost and dying generation of people out there that cannot see for themselves that life is waiting for them just around the corner by getting in to the house of God. Are you with me or not on that? Stand to your feet. 
Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We speak to you about the hearts and the rocky soil of the people of the Inland Empire, Lord. We speak to you of a spirit of lethargy and deception that would be upon them, Lord. Blinders on their eyes, physically as well as spiritually, Lord, that they cannot, because of the rocks and conditions of their heart, see the depth of what the move of God really is. And God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, by the shed blood at Calvary. In him we make our petitions known to the high courts of heaven, Lord. Judge us and see. You know us from beginning to end. We stand before you. Judge us and see, God, if what we say is not true. If this is not a holy house, of a sanctuary for your people, a place to be built strong, a place to be encouraged, directed, and motivated, a place to be sent and go forth, a place to do what you would have us to do. Lord, has it not been a faithful house? Your presence wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that, Lord. Have we not, when you said to shut up for a year and do nothing, is it not, Lord, that we have shut up for a year? And now, Lord, you're releasing us to speak forth the oracles of God about the goodness of God that man cannot and does not see. But, Lord, we speak it not to lift ourselves up, not to lift up a mankind, not to lift up a kingdom of men, but we lift it to lift up the kingdom of God, that God would be known in the Inland Empire. There's a God that loves these people, that has given himself for these people, that is anointed for these people, that can break the yoke off of these people, that can open the eyes of the blind, in these people, God, and we lift that spirit of deception off of them now in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, high courts of heaven, let it be so. Let the gavel of heaven come down upon our petitions tonight that this is the night of the beginning of great and mighty awakening of your people in the Inland Empire. Let it be an awakening year for us, Father. We have slept long enough. We have been quiet long enough. And now, Lord, we awaken to what you would have for us in the name of Jesus. And let it be known in the high courts of heaven as you speak forth and the gavel falls that every devil in hell that resists this prayer will be defeated instantaneously and driven back to the pits of hell. And we thank you, God, for every one person they stop, a hundred will come to the glory of God here at the Rock Church and World Outreach Center. Now I'm finished, Dan. I'm on vacation. Will you stop this? Come on, give the Lord a great big praise. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My goodness, we just had church again. Praise God. Well, we're going to believe God for some things tonight, and we're going to pray for some things. There are seven things that this church believes make up who we are. They're, they're the DNA of this church. They're the pillars of this church. And so uh, just for time's sake, we're going to go through some of these things tonight, and then we're going to open up the altars, and, and, and we'll have a song that we're going to sing in a little bit that you can bring your personal prayer requests before the Lord tonight and lay them here at the altar. So at this time, I'm going to start out, and I'd like to ask Pastor Dave Simmons, who's a uh, pastor over our discipleship ministry, to come and to pray for our SPT program as well as uh, discipleship here at The Rock as we uh, are just evaluating and looking at some things. And Pastor Dave, would you just pray as you feel the lead, and let's join our hearts and our faith. Let's pray. Father, it is your heart that draws people forward. It is your love for us, God, that is so very great that you care for every soul that comes in.
we ask tonight that you would continue not only to anoint that, but there would be an excitement of those getting saved, sharing with other people the testimony of the freedom and the goodness that they've experienced. Father, we pray for new believers many times in adult bodies that they would not be discouraged with their growth. Father, we pray tonight for all the many people in the last year, Lord, that have come forward. Those who have met and completed with a, an encourager, a friend that we call an SBT. We pray and ask God that they might know the very words of Paul that said, being confident in this very thing, that he who has begun a good work will complete it. I pray, Father, for them tonight. I pray for those in the church, whether they be trainers or just the general congregation as a whole, as our senior pastor often leads people to turn around and say hello to people, that they might become part of the family. And I'm asking, Lord, tonight that you would instill in them the very foundation of their salvation is your grace, their faith. There is nothing that they cannot do or break through trusting in you. And so, Father, we pray encouragement to them tonight. We pray, Father, for those who have slipped away just even a little tiny bit, who have felt the need not to be in church, who have become discouraged, that they would not continue in that discouragement. They would not let the sin of this world tarnish them, but they would hang on to the grace of God, that they would break through trusting you in every avenue of their life, recognizing, Father, it is Christ Jesus in them that helps them get things done. Dear God, they're your children. Help us as a church in every way to be a light to them, to be a mentor to them, to be an encouragement to them. Father, we commend them to you tonight. We welcome them in this place. And we ask today, Lord, that you'd bring more. We ask today that you'd bring more laborers, more trainers into this place. We ask today, God, that you would do even more than we can think about. As Pastor has said, there are empty seats. Spirit of God, we welcome you in the doors of this place. We welcome you on the very steps of this campus that the moment people step here, they might know you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Dave. Amen. Well, I was uh, thinking about it and thinking about one of our other pillars that we have here. It's called Godly Relationships. And, and uh, I know Dr. Becker had said, you know, I'll pray for that. But I, I feel impressed that if we're really going to get into godly relationships, then, then we need to start to get outside of ourselves a little bit, get outside of our comfort zone. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to mix it up a little bit tonight, okay? Are you scared? Don't be scared, all right? I just want you to find a prayer partner, somebody that you can link up with in faith. You don't have to touch them or anything like that, okay? No touchy. Just, just if you want to, you know, grab a hand or something like that, or you want to put a hand on a shoulder, or if you don't want to touch, that's cool, all right? No pressure. Just find somebody that you can pray with, uh, maybe two or three, somebody around you that you can just start to pray with, and let's pray for godly relationships. Let's pray in these areas. Let's pray for marriages here in the house. Let's, let's pray for the single people that might be lonely, all right? Let's pray for the people that have come in and feel like they're lost 
in the sea of faces. You know, in a large church, sometimes people come in and they feel like they don't know anybody or they feel like nobody knows them. And the Bible tells us that God is the one who places the solitary in families. And this church, as big as it is, we're just a big family. And, and so we don't want anybody to get lost in here. We don't want anybody to slip through the cracks. And we want to connect people with godly relationships. That's why we provide small groups. That was, that's why we provide opportunities for you to serve alongside other people. And so I'll just ask, just get, get some prayer partners around you right now and take a moment and pray for those areas. Pray for marriages, pray for the single people, and, and, and just pray for the people that are feeling lost and feeling lonely with those that are around you. Just link up and start to pray right where you're at and just start to lift up your prayers and go ahead and pray with one another. start to wrap up your prayers as you're able to. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to continue to pray and I've asked Pastor Deborah to come and, and Pastor Deborah, would you pray for good works here at The Rock? You know, one of the things that, um, that when Jim and I so many years ago saw that rocky soil, Jesus said there's four types of soil in the human heart. There's the hard heart, the rocky heart, the thorny soil, and the good soil. And the, he says that the rocky soil, that because there's no root in, in rocky soil, that as soon as persecution or trouble comes for the word's sake, they hear the word with gladness, they receive it, but then as soon as any trouble comes, they're gone. And so there's no root in them. And so I think that in this valley and in the season and the time that we're living in, we're living in dangerous days. These are dangerous times and our nation is turning. It's turning. Kindness and mercy and being tolerant, not of each other because the law says we have to, but just because there's long suffering is gone. Now it's all legislated and people are apologizing because they have to. You can't make people love each other, respect each other. It's a heart condition. And so good works 
is a pillar here because so many years ago, God taught me that it's the love of God that brings us to repentance. It's not his judgment. In the book of Revelation, when God judges the earth with the seven bowls of wrath, they shake their fists at him and curse God. Judgment does not bring repentance. Romans chapter 2 says, don't you know that it's the goodness and the kindness of God that brings the heart to repentance? When you know that he loves you, when he shouldn't, when you've been bad, nasty, and a rascal, and messed up so bad, he opens his arms. So God so told us to just start getting into the highways and byways, because he hates empty seats more than we do, and love people to life. Don't judge them and no strings attached. So I want to pray for two things. I want to pray that our roots here will go deep because we're coming out of the world into the kingdom. And right now in our world in America, it's turning and changing and you live in a harsh world right now. Do you bear witness with that? So we need to shake off that soil that wants to keep us that way because the kingdom is completely different. And then we need to bring generous hearts, selfless hearts, because guess what? When you get your hands dirty with humanity's problems, you get dirty, just like the shepherds. They were on the night watch at Christmas. When the angels came to them, they had dirty hands, but they had clean hearts. And guys, we're here in San Bernardino and God says, let your hands get dirty with good works. But keep your hearts clean, pure, simple, just simple. So, Father, we just come. Lord, we don't know how to fix our city. And we don't know how to fix our world right now, our, our nation. The harshness. Lord, it seems like we're being polarized. The rich and the poor, the red and the blue, politically, financially, culturally, Lord, there's a polarization taking place in this country. Father, I pray that the goodness of God would just so permeate through this precious family that, Lord, you would show them how to go into the highways and byways of their world and just touch somebody with your goodness. Lord, thank you for giving us resources this year. So many are out of work, Papa. So many are coming to us and they have no jobs and we can't hire them. So we are asking for creative solutions to real problems this year, Lord. Show us how to do this. Lord, if we have to open up our courtyard and let people sleep safely there, if we have to bring in showers, God, I don't know what's happening, but Lord, I know that it's getting deep in this city. And so, Father, I ask that you'd raise up this congregation, that you'd visit them in the night hours, Lord, and you'd speak to them, and you'd give them dreams, and you'd start pricking their hearts like Nehemiah when he heard that the walls of Jerusalem were falling down, Lord, he, he wept. And God, I ask that you'd give us weeping tears, tears, Lord, weeping hearts, that, God, our hard hearts would begin to get softened, and we would care, and we would see the condition of the people that you see. Lord, give us your eyes to see the people of the Inland Empire like you see them. And Lord, we've done so many things over the 23 years of our existence, but Lord, I ask that there just be a fresh beginning and a new work started. That we wouldn't rest on the laurels of what we've done in the past, but God, we would step out like children with a fresh anointing and a fresh momentum to love people to life and to bring your goodness in every way practically that we can, from food to clothing to whatever, jobs, teaching, training, whatever it is we need to do, Lord. You said go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Drag them into my house and there'll be no empty seats at the wedding supper. So Father, I just pray for a compelling, an anointing, a compelling spirit upon us, Lord. Wake us up, God. Kiss the princess and wake her up, Lord, and wake up the sleeping giant. And Lord, may we go into the highways and the byways and the hedges and the streets and the roadways, God. Compel them to come into your house. I pray for an anointing 
just an anointing over your people just lift your hands just lift your hands Lord may it just rain may it just rain on your anointed may it rain on your anointed may the oil of heaven and the kiss of heaven and the presence of the kingdom just be on everyone here Lord in such a special way and use them Lord use them may signs and wonders and miracles be done in the highways and the byways of this city as your people go and as they open their mouths to speak and to give of themselves thank you father for new things new ideas new solutions lord we want to we want it so we're asking for it in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord amen amen jesus I'll ask uh, Dr. Kobernick if he would come and um, Dr. Kobernick, would you just pray for our missionaries? Just quickly, we're, we've got a couple more that we're going to go through. So if you would just lead us in prayer for our missions and, and, uh, and just link up your faith and just believe God. If you know those missionaries, man, get your faith out there. If you don't know them, believe God as Dr. Kobernick prays with us for our world missions. Thank you. We're, we're going to pray with and for five specific missionary families that are among the leaders of the ones this church supports. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for Tim and Rhonda Taylor. Thank you that you have connected them to an indigenous church in India that has plans to plant 10,000 more churches. And we ask that you would bless them and supply their needs and make them fruitful and bless all the indigenous churches around the world that are planning on planting new churches. Father, we hold but before you Mike and Ethel Keys and the Mike Keys Ministry International and all the World Outreach Church, over a hundred congregations in the Philippines, Lord, and you have given my, Apostle Mike the word that 2012 is the year of the miraculous. And so we ask that you would multiply miracles and signs and wonders. And Lord, they're working on a plan to double their church membership in the five years beginning now. And so we ask that you would increase them and bless them. And we ask for every church in the world that has the name of Jesus in it to get a vision for church growth and to save the lost and to add them to your church. Father, we hold up before you uh, the Keith and Heidi Hershey and uh, Mutual Faith Ministries. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry that they have in Beirut, the capital of Lebanon, and in Nigeria, where there's been so much trouble lately. And we ask, Lord, that you would bring uh, miraculous insight and understanding to their leaders. We especially pray that you would use them for the salvation of the lost in the Middle East and in Nigeria, the most populous nation of Africa. Father, we move on to pray for and thank you for uh, Baron and Lisa Gilfillan. Thank you, Father, for the ministries that you've got under their uh, umbrella. We especially thank you and praise you for the 2020 program that is reaching unreached people groups that have never heard the gospel before. And we pray, Lord, for everybody around the world that's reaching out to responsive peoples. Help them to recognize them, encourage them, give them faith and power and effectiveness as they plant churches in languages where people have never known Jesus before. And Father, we join with Carl and Vivia Saunders, Lord, in, in their mission in Africa. Thank you, Lord, that he shared just the last week or two that there's 410 million Christians in Africa that know how to shout and jump and sing hallelujah, but are not practicing the Christian life in their families, in their villages, in their towns. And we pray, we agree with them, Lord, and ask that you would change that and that you would bring a desire for your people, not only in Africa, but all over the world, including the Rock Church San Bernardino, Lord, that we would walk in your ways and study your word and practice your play, the way you want us to live in our families, in our homes, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, so that your people will be the salt and light you intend them to be. And we thank you and praise you that the Rock Church is also a world outreach center in Jesus' name. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you're wondering what our other pillars were, they are leadership training. And so we do uh, uh, train up leaders. We do have a Bible college here as well as train up leaders and then planting churches. And we are planting Pastor David and Dion this year, as you saw in the video. And uh, so let's just believe God for those two areas. Father God, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that as we are 
taking on the call of God to speak louder this year than we ever have before, God. That, Lord, you would raise up leaders in this house, God. We need able men and women filled with the Spirit of God and with wisdom, God, to carry out your work here in the Inland Empire, to be the vessels that are going to take that message of Jesus to the lost and to the dying, to do good works, Father God, to go to the mission field, Lord, to, to, to build godly relationships and build bridges of relationship between people, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, that you raise up leaders here in this house, God. And also we bless Pastor David and Dion as they go to San Diego, God. We pray that you provide for their needs, God. You give them the strategies that they need. You fill them with wisdom, God. Bring strategic relationships, God, and connections in their city and in their area, God, so that they can build that church, God. We pray for Pastor Eddie and Donna Elguera in the Rock Church of Coachella Valley as well as what they're doing in Ocean Life San Diego and Oceanside California God thank you for new works thank you for great things ahead of them thank you for influence God and for doors of utterance to be open to them Father God we lift up to you Pastor Tom and Heather Flores in the Rock Church of South Riverside God we pray that you just continue to multiply their effectiveness God and this year as Pastor Tom has shared that they've crossed over from being a church plant to getting established as a church Lord we thank you for bringing them increased and solid, healthy growth, God, and laying out the path before them. Finally, God, we lift up to you, Pastor Henny and Miranda Bosman of the Rock Church of Temecula. God, we thank you for your blessing upon that church. God, they've encountered many struggles this last year. God, I thank you that 2012 will be a year of blessing, God, that it'll be a year of growth and a year of power for them, Father God. And those struggles that they've had in the city will actually be turned around for the salvation of many. God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen.